You see me? Yes, you see me? <laughs> yeah, so I actually put mind? this on. It's only the second time in a month I got to put my costume on, so I feel better. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you so much for giving us the time today. <laughs> do you remember do you remember the last time you saw me? World Series 2018 in LA. Right. And do you know what happened after you left? <laughs> well, a lot of stuff happened. What happened to you after I left? Okay. I saw you in the parking lot with a bunch of your friends, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. After you left, I was asked to help a bunch of the guys who work there help them clean up that party in that tent on the other side of the parking lot. Uh huh. They got on a bus to leave to go to their car. I walked to my car. It was the only car in the parking lot at like three in the morning, which was after the 18 inning game. Yes. I got in my car and every single exit I drove to was closed and locked. I was locked in Dodger Stadium. What? I eventually went, wait, I eventually went to sleep in my car. There was no open exit. Every gate was closed. I drove around the entire stadium. About four in the morning, maybe five in the morning, a police officer knocked on my window and said, what are you doing here? I go, I'm trapped. He got me to the gate and let me out. I was the very last person to leave Dodger Stadium after that 18-inning World Series game where I met you. Oh, my God. That is insane. Yeah. Well, so I never, I never put that out there because I was really embarrassed. Well, really I'm embarrassed. Well, I was something that happened that night, too, though. Something that happened to me. That's why I thought you said that. I lost my, my World Series credential that day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You lost your cancer, right. So I had right. to, you had to sleep in the Dodger Stadium. I had to break into the Dodger Stadium. Yeah. So <laughs> what happened was that was a night that, remember, it was the 18 inning game. And mm -hmm. I put up a video Hey, I'm here and I'm trapped in the stadium. Somebody come get me. And I put it up about, and nobody came. They couldn't get in. And it was crazy. And then, of course, you know, they played the next day, and then the uh, Red Sox won the World Series, I think. Yes. They're asking if the cops recognized you when they when they knocked on your window. The funny part is, yes, they did. <laughs> and he said, I'll let you out if I can get a selfie. No way. <laughs> yeah. How many selfies have you taken now? Is that the first thing people ask now? Yeah, you know, years ago... If we saw a celebrity or, or somebody you knew you recognized, we'd say, can we have your autograph? Here, sign this, sign that. No. Nowadays, they say, can I have a selfie? Mm -hmm. You know? So I never looked it up, but I know that when ESPN followed me at the All-Star Game in 2017 here in Miami, mm -hmm. they had a camera crew following me and another camera crew interviewing the fans who wanted a picture. They had two people count how many selfies were done. In that one day, it was 3,303. 3,303 no. in one day. Yeah. <laughs> and if I go to a city that I'm friendly with, mm -hmm. like San Francisco, Kansas City, Chicago, Boston, St. Louis, they will get in a line at the end of the game, up and around the stadium, and in Dodger Stadium, they always go like, Mars, man, we're turning out the lights. <laughs> Get home. We're turning out the lights. So I will be the last person to leave. It's fun, that, though. It is fun. I, when I saw you, you had a line of people. And I saw you when I first met you. It was at the Houston Astros World Series in Houston. So everybody yes. was in and orange. You, and you were one of the few girls, if you remember, they led on the field. Mm -hmm. They had you on the field to interview people, and they were talking about they don't usually let girls do that. I go, wait, that's so discriminating. That's so <laughs> racist, you know? But you were on the field interviewing mm -hmm. all the key players. Well, also, you speak Spanish, right? Yes, yes, that is my first yeah, language. That's the big Spanish. advantage for you. You can go talk to those players in Spanish <laughs> that people can't do. So I was right. Yeah, that, that is a big advantage. And the one thing we actually, uh, for the people are just tuning in right now, is Lawrence Levin, known as the Marlins Man. And he actually, we met in 2017, 
and uh, the World Series in 2017. And he remembers me because I actually asked him his real name, wasn't it? <laughs> right, and I actually said to you, if you remember, you're one of the first people ever asked me what my real name is. By the way, somebody wrote there right. It was sexist, not racist. It was sexist when they said that. <laughs> But yeah, and you asked me my name, and I said, my name is Lawrence Levy, and nobody ever asked me that, but that's my name. <laughs> yeah, so then when I saw you again in 2018, that's when uh, that whole thing happened. It says, you, can I have your autograph baseball? Actually, you do have your own baseball card. How does that feel as a fan to have your own baseball card and to appear on the famous MLB The Show video game? Yeah, well, let me tell you how that happened. MLB approached me about doing a special about me, and I said, no, I don't want to promote me. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. So the baseball card company said, hey, we're getting a lot of fans that want a card of you. Mm -hmm. Card of me? I'm not a player. They said, well, we want to do a card of you. And they made a few of them. Let me get them, okay? <laughs> a lot of people have seen this one. This is the one they made that got out there by Tops. Okay, I hope I do this right. Can you see it? Oh, yes. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I see. So that's seen. one. Mm -hmm. Then we wanted one with a jersey. The one with the jersey was one that was the one I wore to the National League Championship Series. And this they made in a limited edition. Not a lot of people got this one. You see the jersey in there? <gasps> oh, there's a piece of your jersey in there. Right. That's actually oh. one of these jerseys that I wore to the playoff game that they took and cut up and oh, put wow. in the limited edition part, okay? And then, then the next year, without me knowing about it, they did another card that I never knew about. It just showed up, two cards that they did that nobody's really seen. There you go. Another one, so three total baseball cards. No, there's another one. Oh. There's another one, okay? <laughs> And then the last one they did, which was two years afterwards, when I already had my beard, and they were still mm -hmm. doing it. Look how small that one is. Oh, okay. Oh, but that's neat. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, they offered me um, $5,000 to do this, and I said, I don't want the money. So mm -hmm. instead, we donated it to the Make-A-Wish, so it would grant the wish for a kid. That's oh, a really that's, big thing. That's sweet, yeah. So... Um, and the guy who was my connection there got a promotion, and that's why they never they never reached out to me again to do a new card with a beard. Oh, yeah, you need one with the beard now. Right. Are you I still going to keep one. the visor? Um, the I just made a promise thing? to some people. I'm going to keep wearing orange and the visor until the Marlins make the playoff. That's just, <laughs> nobody knows that. You've got an exclusive. They say, how long are you going to wear that for? My answer is, I'm wearing it until they earn my respect and they make the playoff. All right. So, okay. So then, what are three things the Marlins must do to make the playoffs? It says you're a Marlins fan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, the city of Miami hates the Marlins. Despite what they've said, and they have a great marketing department, mm -hmm. people have hated them because of what... Jeter and the ownership did, okay? They gave away on salary dumps position players that have been stars everywhere else. Mm -hmm. The only player they needed, they needed was a third baseman. They were loaded, okay? Not only did they have Stanton, Yelich, and Ozuna in the outfit. I know you know baseball. Yes, yeah. But the backups were Dietrich and Ichiro. Yeah. Dietrich was leading home runs and more home runs in each at bat last year. Then Yelich had, but he hurt his shoulder and had surgery, uh -huh. okay? So you got a loaded outfield. Mm -hmm. You have D. Gordon on second, Ramiro at catcher, and before he got hurt, you had Prado on third. Prado, yes. The team was former loaded. Diamondback we, as well. We, well former Diamondback. Mm -hmm. But we had no pitching. Once yes. Jose Fernandez died, mm -hmm. no pitching. So the, what they should have done is what Stanton, in the meeting with G, Stanton met with Derek and said, Get us pitching, but don't spend $25 million a year. He said, get us like a number three or four starter because we had the best batting average and the most home runs in baseball after the All-Star break. We have bats. We need pitching. Peter said, okay, sure. 
and then a week later started trading everybody away. So that was very bad. So yeah. the, what I think the Marlins, we're in a position now where the Marlins are not going to be winners anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Even if they built a good time, look at their division. They're with the Mets, who have great pitching and bats now. The Phillies, who got Harper and Ramiro. <laughs> They're with the Braves, a lot of people pick for the World Series. And I forgot a team. Oh, my God. Braves, Phillies. Oh, Mets, Braves, Phillies, and Marlins. Those are the teams. They're in a tough division. Really tough division, the yes. The division right now is where the Diamondbacks are. You got the Dodgers and nobody else. The mm -hmm. Padres aren't great. The Giants no. are on the way down. The Rockies aren't great. And the Diamondbacks are good. Yes, We're in a I weaker think, yeah. Especially with the new additions oh, that we have this year, too. Yeah. Well, I, oh, my God. Thank you. Somebody nationals. wrote that. I yeah, forgot. Nationals. The they World Series champions. The Nationals, champions. yes. I mean, the World the Series champions. <laughs> you, know, you know, somebody, Eileen, asked me, did I hear the banging garbage cans? Because I went to every one of those games. Yes, and you are right, right behind all your seats for uh, – for you sports lovers, you know that Marlins man has the best seats all the time, right behind, right behind home play, the best seats at any sports event. But specifically for the World Series, you sit right behind home play, right behind the umpire. Did you actually hear anything? Yes, but I heard two things. One, I heard the banging garbage cans, mm -hmm. but I wonder why somebody didn't tell them to shut up because it was distracting me. <laughs> it never occurred to me it was sending signals. I'm not lying to you, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm sure there's one city that's happy because of the coronavirus. It's the Houston. Because you're not yeah. hearing the Astros get ripped every day in the media anymore. Exactly. Every single day, the Astros or the Trastros, as somebody wrote, <laughs> were getting ripped in the media. But more importantly, what I heard all the time was the whistling. Now, mm -hmm. some of the players have said that the whistling was the way they were immediately conveying it was not a fastball. I remember hearing whistling in a totally quiet stadium because they get quiet when your team is batting. Yes. They make noise when the other team is batting. And saying to myself, what's all that whistling? Now, so that you know, I'll give you a secret. Mm -hmm. The ball players whistle when they see a hot girl go by. So if you go walking by, they're going to whistle. In Vegas... The people that work the tables use the word crap game. So if they say crap game, crap game, all the guys working there to look around what hot chick is walking by. Right? Uh, okay. In Houston, I heard them whistling. I remember looking around. Wait, there's no hot girl walking around. What are they whistling for? What's going on? And I asked my friends, why are they whistling? Nobody <laughs> knew. Now we learn they were whistling to give signals to the players. But if you heard them whistle, how come the umpires didn't hear them whistle or the trash cans? I think, I think nobody put it together. All the games? Yes. I think that every home game I went to in that year and the next year, which was the playoffs with the World Series, I heard that whistling and, and banging. I heard it for sure. Mm -hmm. But I never realized it was signal sending. See, yeah, because you were sitting right there during the game. During the game, I sit in the all the way in the back or up in the media center. I'm way too, I'm too far to even, you know. No, I hear. I, you're right. Yeah. I hear everything when this. I hear when the catchers talk to the batter, the umpire, but never turn around. Mm -hmm. They'll say like, "Hey, that was a freaking ball," or they'll <laughs> scream at them, but they don't do body language. You get them throw. If you do the body language, they'll throw you out. Mm -hmm. So I hear all the time the talking about a guy will say, just like the movie uh, Major League, he'll say, hey, how's your mom doing? How's your sister doing? I had fun with him last night. And yeah. the guys will say that just to piss them off. You hear all conversation. <laughs> That's right. I hear it all. So how but is I, it I that you do get the best seats uh, that there is? I know, but the people want to know. How is it that you are able to get the best seats at every sporting event there is, not just baseball. Well, let's say at horse racing, the owner of the track, Pimlico, asked me to go and stand at the finish wire. He wanted people to see the horse racing was cool to everybody. So when you see me standing and doing the Marlins man sign at the pre- <laughs> Is this the Marlins the man wire, sign right here? 
That's the Marlins man sign. <laughs> there you go. Now, you bar, the, bar, <laughs> the bar stool guys, your nails look good. The oh. bar stool guys inherited it, and they we make it the bar stool sign. But it started out as the Marlins man sign, and I did that at the Preakness when American Pharaoh crossed the finish wire. So that was something they asked me to do, and it was a huge story. Huge. When you asked me about the other seats for years, and you're young. A lot of people are listening are young. I didn't get seats from StubHub or on the internet. We mm -hmm. got them from scalpers. Okay? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Scalpers. So those scalpers eventually became ticket brokers because they mm -hmm. changed the law so you could buy a package for hotel rooms and get tickets included. So I had a database in different cities of the ticket brokers to buy the seats from. Oh, Over okay. Time, I leave by me going to the games. Mm -hmm. They come to me and they hand me their cards and they give me their information and I make a database which looks just like this. And I have every city and who has the basketball, baseball, and football seat. Oh, wow. So I have, it. I know, like, if I want to go to Chicago or Phoenix or Kansas City. Now I know City. who I'm calling next. Okay. Like, I know who has to speak. <laughs> wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I also had season tickets to the Marlins, the Yankees, and the Mets. And a lot of people like to trade. So, oh. for example, the guy that has the Rockies seats, he says, hey, the Rockies are going to New York, the Yankees Stadium, for the first time. I want to sit in your seat. I say, great. What do you got for me? He goes, how about opening day against the Dodgers? Deal. Nice. So I was at opening day against the Dodgers last year, and that's how that happened. You do. That's the ultimate black book, they said. It is. It, it is ultimate my top, black book. <laughs> top secret. How much, how, what is the most you have paid for a ticket? The most I paid for a ticket was NBA Finals Game 7, Golden State Warriors against Cleveland Cavaliers in San Francisco, LeBron James. It was uh, 25000 a ticket for the first row behind the bench, and uh -huh. I paid the least. Everybody around me paid more. $25,000? I bought the ticket. $1,000. But people around me paid a lot more. Well, oh, that was a deal then. Because I bought those when the playoffs started from the guy that owns them. I made him a deal. Uh -huh. He didn't know the game, there would be a game seven against mm -hmm. Cleveland with LeBron. What if game seven Warriors had been like Philadelphia, Atlanta, somebody like that? Mm -hmm. So Tyga was sitting next to me. Tyga paid $50,000. He paid 50000 The guy two seats over was like a daughter of, or relative of Bill Gates. She paid sixty thousand. Mm. So people, I actually got mine for a game seven for that much money for less money. Now another World Series, the most expensive World Series, was the Red Sox versus the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. That was expensive, and also the Astros. Astros versus the Dodgers. The guy who has that uh, X10 page, I forgot his name. He's from Miami. He paid fifty thousand dollars a seat to sit in the first row. Wow! Yeah, paid a hundred grand for two seats. Wow! Uh, the somebody wants to know if you've ever been to Omaha. Yes, I went to the College World Series three years in a row. Mm -hmm. There, I was there when it rained, and they rained out the game two of the World uh, World Series, and they pushed it to the third day. And an interesting story there is that everybody couldn't stay an extra day because the Olympic swim trials were starting. Every hotel room was full. They couldn't find rooms. So out of like 30,000 people, only 2,000 stayed. And I was one of them. And they invited people to come into the noon game for free from the swim trial. Wow. At the Omaha. I was there three years for the College World Series. Well, you, you've gone to College World Series, uh, Kentucky Derbies, Basketball Finals, World Series. Have you ever been to a World Baseball Classic game? How about Olympics or uh, a World Cup? Yes. Okay. So I've been, of course, to World Baseball Classic. 
Mm-hmm. I've been to the Olympics in Atlanta, and not every decision I do is the right one. <laughs> I made a really big mistake in 1980, and you probably weren't even born yet. In 1980, yet. as a college graduation present, my dad bought me tickets to the Winter Olympics in Lake Placid. Mm-hmm. Okay? And the way it worked back then is that you had to apply. We didn't have internet. You had to apply by sending your money in advance in the U.S. mail, and then they would send you with tickets they wanted. So I had tickets to the bobsled finals. No, no, excuse me. I had tickets to the semifinals in basketball and semifinals. I'm sorry, base. I'm saying it wrong. Hockey. It was Winter Olympics. So I was in Lake Placid, and I traded before the Olympics started. I traded semifinals hockey for bobsled finals. And I thought I hit the lottery because bobsled is hot. Down, the, the, the down skiing is hot, and the ski jump is hot. Not a lot of people were in the hockey back then. Yes. And what happened was the U.S. Olympic team, the game that I traded out of in 1980 was a game against Russia that's now been called the Miracle on Ice, where the U.S. Olympic team of college kids beat the veterans from Russia in hockey. And I had tickets to that game, and I traded out to go to the bobsled. And I had to stand outside the arena and listen on a radio to the game and all the fans chant USA, USA. I traded out hockey for bobsled. You got to remember, semifinals hockey for finals bobsled is a great trade. But I messed up. (laughs) Not this time, no. (laughs) No. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that wasn't a, a good choice. Here they're asking how many jerseys you own. How many Aha. orange jerseys I have an answer for you. I have 14, and that's why I'm by phone. I'm 14? displaying my Wait, office. I'm going to give you a Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I know I got more. Wait, first of all, my cats are here. Can you see them? Uh, here, who yeah, is that? what are their names? Who is that? That's Fluffy. So oh, that's Fluffy. Fluffy? Here's Darth Vader. <laughs> Darth Vader, there you go. <laughs> here's, 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 this is Truffles. Oh, hi, Truffles. <laughs> here's Romeo. Romeo, how many you have? Eight, eight. Here's, Na- here's Nala. They'll no. come out in a minute. But here you go. You asked about Jersey. Yes. You see him? Oh, my God. Let me what give you a little tour. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Pot, here's the tour. Guys. So here's the tour. This one okay. right here is the original Marlins jersey when they started in 1993. It was the Florida Marlins, and the letters were in silver. Mm-hmm. Then they invented this look when they went to the Yankees pinstripe with the vest. And when they won the 1997 World Series against the Cleveland Indians, they're wearing this vest. Okay? Oh, yeah. And I'm back. I have nothing. Then... They went to this look with the sleeve, okay, when Loria bought the team. And when they won the World Series in 03 in Yankee Stadium, they're wearing these jerseys. The difference is the number in the front. See mm-hmm. a number? Yes, 13. Over here, there's no number. Oh, okay. And then they all came into the black letters because people said they couldn't see the names on the back when the names on the back were silver. So then the oh. Marlins in 2012 – Come out with this jersey. Okay? And is that when you became to get recognized then? The, I the started in 12, but I wasn't jersey. called... I, I started in 12, but I mm-hmm. wasn't called the Marlins man. They were calling me the creamsicle because I'm <laughs> orange and white like the candy bar. <laughs> Marlins man's better. <laughs> right. So, in, and then in 2014, when I went to Kansas City with the Royals, that's when it blew up. And that's what I had on the back, Marlins man number 13. Mm, oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then in 2016, when Jose Fernandez died mm-hmm. and they were signing the wall, I had framed on the wall a Jose Fernandez jersey. I took it and wore it around the country. And this is signed. And this is signed by him. <gasps> oh, Jose wow. Fernandez, rookie of the year, right here, signed it. Jose Fernandez, rookie of the year. But I wore it and it's signed by people. From San Francisco, uh-huh. Chicago, 
Washington, and New York Mets. All over the country, they ah. signed it. And the, the um, Baseball Hall of Fame mm -hmm. wanted this, and I wouldn't give it to them. I, would, I framed it. You're uh -oh. like, no. <laughs> okay, and the visor. Then, then what happened was, as you know, Derek Jeter, before he bought the Marlins, there was three bidders. Mm -hmm. And one of them was Romney, one was Moss, and one was Tim. Yes, I am a Mets fan. And yes, I love E40. He's my friend. Okay? And and so what happened was when I wanted Jeter, I wanted him to be the winning owner. And mm -hmm. they were retiring his jersey. So I went to New York, mm -hmm. and I had this jersey made. The Jeter that, Marlins jersey. That's an illegal jersey. Okay? <laughs> I, I ordered it, and MLB vetoed it and said, you can't have it. Because you never played for the Marlins, your name's not Jeter. Oh. I said, no problem. I know the guy who owns the company who makes the numbers. I met him at the show in Vegas. So I said, hey, I need three alphabets. And I bought the jerseys. I ironed this and made it myself. What? You made that? <laughs> I made that myself. And I That's only wear it at Yankee Wait. And I mean, I only wear it at Yankee Stadium. Uh -huh. Okay, and everybody goes crazy when I do it. <laughs> then we have the new style, the new style, and I became number one because Jose, Jose Fernandez and Marcelo Zuna gave me this jersey. And they said, you can't wear number 13 anymore. Mm -hmm. That is Ozuna's number. The uh, players decided there was no number one on the team at the time. So mm -hmm. I'm number one, and they gave me this jersey, and they said, you are number uno. Nah. So that's jersey they yeah. gave me. And these are different visors. The visors are different. They all look, everything looks the same in the front. And the last one is the new style, which has the at Marlins underscore man. Because oh. that's my Twitter and my Instagram. Uh-huh. Oh, oh here's, here's, wait, here's Chewbacca. Oh, Chewbacca. <laughs> and here's Fluffy. And is here's one of the only trophy? four. Wait, that's a World Series trophy. There's only four of those. This is when the Marlins won the World Series in 03. They made four replicas. Lurie has one. Samson has one. I think Jack McKeon has one. And there's number four. What? How yep. do you end up with the World Series trophy? They made, Tiffany made four copies, and I was able to get one of them. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Is that your, because you have a lot of memorabilia. Is that your favorite one? No, my favorite one, I'll show you in a minute, is I have the ball that Pudge Rodriguez held on to when he got hit by J.T. Snow and flipped over and popped up with the ball, and the Marlins won, beat the Pirates, and got to advance to play the Cubs in the series, which turned out to be the Bartman series. Wow. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll go down the hall in a minute. It says, hey, Marlins man, what is your favorite ballpark food? You know, I was asked that yesterday, and I put it I put it on Twitter. The answer is as follows. Ready? Mm -hmm. It's going to be not what you expect. The view from San Francisco, uh -huh. Pittsburgh, is the best because you see the bays and the bridges. The food at Yankee Stadium is the best. The park in center field for kids is the best in San Diego. Mm -hmm. The outside of the stadium and the inside as far as the shrine to baseball, people don't know that. Detroit Tiger. Okay? Mm -hmm. Detroit Tiger. Okay? Detroit has, when you walk up, huge statues, like three stories tall, a baseball bat, a three-story high Tiger, like 10 tigers on the outside. You go inside, they have a carousel where you ride tigers, and they have a Ferris wheel made out of baseballs. And every section has memorabilia from baseball every 10 years. And in center field, they have statues of Hall of Fame players and cars hanging on the wall. Um, the barbecue is the best in tailgating in Kansas City and Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Okay? The outside experience, as far as, like, things to do, is the best in Boston, Chicago, and Atlanta. Those three cities have like a little park or restaurants and bars yes. on the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, Phoenix, what I like about Phoenix, they have the pool. 
It is nice, yes. <laughs> okay. And they have a pool in center field that not everybody knows about because you can't see it when you sit low. Mm -hmm. And they also have something cool that the outside patio is totally powered by solar stuff. They have those things. Yes. And not everybody knows. I go, what is all that? What is that? And they go, that's the power for the stadium. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're so it's solar powered. Uh-huh. We do get a lot of sun yeah. in Arizona, so it was the best thing. Have you been to all 30 stadiums? The only one I'm missing right now is Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, nobody has nobody has been yet to the new Texas uh, the Texas, stadium at the new Texas, yes. That's Just lucky so again. Lucky. <laughs> Just lucky. Yeah, it's lucky. So with globe life, globe, globe, I'm, I'm starting to read. Yeah, Texas is globe life. Yes. Yes. Good. What? Yeah. We'll oh, you know what else too? Everybody's... I think it's great. Let me tell you something. The future, the future. It started. I saw it first in St. Louis. St. Louis has what they call Ballpark Village, but Ballpark Village is not mm -hmm. the thing that's cool. It's really St. Louis Live. St. Louis Live is all the restaurants and bars that have a circular area where inside people go. They built the same thing in Texas. Mm -hmm. They have Texas Live across the street. Oh, okay. They built it in um, Atlanta, right? Philadelphia, yeah, Atlanta. Philadelphia Live. Mm -hmm. Atlanta has Atlanta Live. Mm -hmm. Kansas City's live, though, is not next to the stadium. It's the Power and Light District. And that whole thing about live is really cool because it's a bunch of restaurants and bars. The entrances all focus in the middle with a big screen TV and a stage for concerts and stuff. And that's yes. really like the future. Yeah, I, re I really saw that because I've been to a few of them and I've been to Ballpark Village and Atlanta Braves and I saw that and I, and I really, really like the space to the village. Opening. Uh, I was reading some. What they're talking about in St. Louis, they initially opened only live. Ballpark Village is finally coming online with the hotels and the restaurants and everything across the street. And when I was in Denver last year, mm -hmm. they told me they're building in left field on the other side of the stadium a new building which is going to have like live and restaurants and bars in it. The one that hasn't done anything is the Mets. Have mm -hmm. you been to City Field? No, not yet, not yet. They knocked down all of the garages and auto repair places on first base side. Mm -hmm. So it's like three blocks long and two blocks deep. I never did anything with it. Oh, what? So sad. And then yeah, I know they, you, were they have, with, they uh, you were on ESPN earlier. Did uh, you hear anything about when maybe baseball season is starting back? Do you have any information? Yeah, let me tell you. Let me tell you what's going on there. And I, I have some. I'm friends with a lot of guys mm -hmm. at the highest level. So, oh, you see the cat in the back. Who's that? That's Nala. Um, <laughs> yeah. Who else is there? Nala, Nala, and who else? Where's Fluffy? Or Fluffy's right here. I don't know where Vader is. Okay, here's the story. Mm -hmm. This is very complicated, but they're trying to make. June 1st, when the minor leagues come back, which would affect Arizona. Minor they want to play for two, they want to play only two weeks in the minor league. Mm -hmm. They want to play your Cactus League for two weeks and in Florida for two weeks in June. Mm -hmm. Then they want each pitcher to get one start in two weeks and evaluate the players. On June 15th, if it works out right, they want to decide who makes the team and who doesn't. The ones that don't make the team, they're sent down to the minor leagues, okay? And they're going to try and make baseball start 4th of July weekend, okay? Uh -huh. Now, here's the problem. There's two options. Option number one, which you've heard about, they all go to Arizona. Yes. But they don't want to do that to players. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go to Arizona because it's like being in prison. They're going to be only allowed to stay in the hotel Quarantine, yes. in the stadium. Mm -hmm. They're only allowed room service. They are not allowed to go out to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to go to bars. They're not allowed to get contact with other people. And so basically, they're going to they're be quarantined in a hotel. Now, the hotels yeah. there are nice. The Phoenician, the Scottsdale Princess. We're talking about really nice hotels. Okay? Depending on also, like, where, where it is. Because somebody from the Rangers is not going to stay in the Phoenician and drive an hour, over an hour to be You're on correct. the field Correct. in the morning. So some of them might so be the stuck players, in the sun. Mm -hmm. 
And also, the players do not want to be away from their families yeah. for five months. Okay? <laughs> That's a long time. So what they were hoping to do is this, is what I was told. The schedule made for July and August and September stays the same. Mm -hmm. The schedule for October, when they normally make the playoffs, they want to take April and use that schedule in October. Oh, okay. okay? Mm -hmm. They want to take May and go into November, but they're worried about cold weather sites. The problem is, what do you do with June? You can't play in December. What they were talking about doing was double headers, which would be only seven innings long and having 30 players on the teams and having the playoffs in December. And here's the interesting part. It has to be a neutral site. Yes. So mm -hmm. the American League playoffs have to be in a National League city. And the National League playoffs have to be in an American League city. So let's say you won't have a team that, let's say, hates the Yankees because they're in the American League. And those that would mean Arizona, L.A. Dodgers, San Diego Padres, L.A. Angels, mm -hmm. Houston Astros, the Braves, the Marlins, they're all warm, okay? Mm -hmm. And maybe possibly some of the covered stadiums like Milwaukee. That's what they would do for the playoffs in December. So baseball playoffs will happen in December. In Christmas, now, yeah. The players don't like this idea. The mm -hmm. players don't like this idea because they don't want to be in Phoenix, Arizona for six months without their family. Or if they're single, they can't go out to a restaurant. They can't meet girls. That's what they, they want. But, you know, anything. nobody gets to go. <laughs> now, and the other thing is, what about fans? What about people like me? Mm -hmm. When do I get to go to a game? And the other thing is we have to think about, do I want to go? Do I want to go and sit in a stadium where maybe somebody, sister or brother mm -hmm. or kid, got coronavirus and hasn't had symptoms yet? Exactly. You talk about testing the players. When do the fans get to go again? Mm-hmm. It might not happen. And I saw a, um, it was a, from the governor, the governor of LA that said no sporting events or concerts in LA until 2021. So even if it does yeah. return, it's not going that was to the mayor in LA. Mm -hmm. The mayor said that. Yes. You know, and also some people I know in Center for Disease, I went to school at Emory and some of my friends worked in CDC, Center for Disease Control. They were saying we might not have spectator sports with more than 50 people till 2022, 2022. a year and a half. Because wow. what yeah. they're saying is if we open up things now and there's remissions and exacerbations and it pops up again and everything we've sacrificed the last six weeks goes back to ground mm -hmm. zero, we're going to have to shut down for a while. And then the problem becomes not only do we get to go to a restaurant or a place with somebody a seat away, what happens to the fans in the arena? It just takes one person to get everybody sick. Yes. It, it does. And so right now, what is happening in Taiwan, the fans are cardboard, robots, and mannequins. That, that <laughs> They do have the cheerleaders, though. The cheerleaders were brought so that they can cheer on the team, but nobody is allowed besides the cardboard. They're talking about restarting it in Japan and see what goes what happens there but i'm thinking based on what happens there then uh the u.s will get some ideas of what's working what's not and hopefully we well th this is a very what's the word this is a there are no answers the people who are in charge can't give us answers I don't think I don't think we see basketball this year at all or hockey. Are you there? What happened? Did I lose you? No, you're still there. Are you there? I I hear you and I see everybody fine. I have um I have super fast stuff here. I have fiber optic lines and Wi-Fi. I don't know what your reception is. Oh, I was okay. Can you hear me now? Can you see me? Yes, now? I hear you now. Fine. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yes. I don't. I don't know what what had happened. Now we're good. Okay. Jason yeah, Kenny, wait, wait. Jason Kenny, where have you been? I just see right here. Jason oh, Kenny was Omaha Storm Chasers. 
They said he didn't work there anymore, and I haven't heard from Jason in two years. Oh, it says there you go. See, you got a lot. This is your first. Yeah, I see it. Instagram live, by the way. Thank you for joining us on your first ever Instagram live. Look, you have a lot, a lot of fans, a lot of people that love you, a lot of people that want to be you. That's that's <laughs> what I want to be when I retire. That's what I want to do when I grow up. What made you decide? You know, it's like I'm just gonna go to all the games uh, that that I want to the best sporting events. What what made you decide to do that? They. What happened was I already had tickets to a lot of the events in Miami. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't going around the country. In 2012, they told me they thought I had liver cancer and I might have six months to live. Oh, wow. So I decided to start going in person to what I was watching on TV. Mm -hmm. And then what happened, they said we made a mistake when the biopsy came back, you don't have liver cancer. So I said, I'm having too much fun, I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> and I started bringing people with me. So the girl I was dating, Christina, mm -hmm. and I broke up. I said, Christina, who's going to go with me? You're the Yankees chick. <laughs> and she said, why don't you bring some people in each city who never had the chance to find home plate? Uh -huh. Or go to the upper deck and grab somebody in the last row and bring them to the first row. And that's what I did in Milwaukee and in St. Louis. I went to the upper deck and brought somebody to the first row. Well, wow. and that's what you do. You have that motto that's pay it forward, isn't it? Yes. And my father was a colonel in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I've always been a big proponent of the military and policemen and firemen and teachers. And I always say there are real heroes. I actually own a trademark to a phrase, not all heroes wear capes. Mm -hmm. I own that. Oh, really? So I never enforced it. Not all heroes wear capes. And I had shirts made, policeman, fireman, teacher, and a soldier. Oh, and that's what I own. That says, look, there's somebody here that said you did that for him and his son. That you gave him tickets for the, somebody and their son. Yeah, I always do that. I, end, I give about more than 1,000 tickets a year. Wow. More than 1,000. To the well, best seats. Yeah, of course, because you have the best seats. Well, thank you so much for giving us your time today and for talking to us. Does anybody have any questions? Wait, I want to show you something. Mark Hold on. Man. All right, yeah, sure. Hold on. All right, so I want to give you a really quick tour. Yeah, of course. Let's see. Behind the scenes, right, here we go. Marlins, man, guys. All right. So my whole office is about sports. Because Down you are there an attorney, is... a workman's comp attorney in Florida. Right. That's your real here is... My mm -hmm. office made this for my birthday. Oh, nice. And this is what I used to look like 30 pounds heavier. And this is in San Francisco. Wow. Okay. Uh huh. This is some of the articles about me in a in, in newspaper. Wow. Okay, we're not done. This is the Miami Dolphin section. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's the Marlins Park section. <gasps> okay, this was supposed to be the Jose Fernandez wall, uh -huh. but Jose died, as we all know. Okay, yeah. this is the very first jersey. This is the second one when I changed the style. And then when you come in here, these are all the baseball stadiums in the country, what they look like. Mm -hmm. This is a map. I which ones I went to. So the only one white is the Twins. That's the only one that's left. The Twins. These are where the stadiums are. The golf tournament. Here's what I want to show you in here. So this is when the Marlins started in 93. This is the World Series stuff, the World Series in 97. And that sign I brought to the World Series in 03, and I held it up for three in a minute, that sign. This is a jersey worn in the World Series that was signed by the team. I'm an Austin. Here's something cool. really cool. Oh, Everybody like loves baseball it. Baseball museum. <laughs> yeah, this museum. is stuff from the World Series. But you remember the Marlins played the Cubs and Steve Bartman caught the ball mm -hmm. in Game Six, and the Marlins ended up winning. The Cubs were so sure they're going to win the World Series, they were up three games to two. They printed World Series tickets. They uh -huh. thought they were going. Uh huh. Here they are. What? 
Those are Chicago Cubs 2003 World Series tickets for Wrigley Field, and they didn't go. Okay? Now, here we go. Are you ready? Yes. These are the bases used in the World Series. No. All right? Here's first base from game two used. Wow. Here is third base. No, yes, game three, second base. Here is game one, third base. Notice nobody that was a that was a very low scoring game. Hardly anybody got to third base. It's barely touched. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is the home plate oh from game God. seven. My God. The Marlins won it in six. Mm -hmm. They never had a game seven. That's home get plate from game seven. Wow. Okay. These are the shoes that Brad Petty wore when he won two games. He should have been the MVP, not Beckett. And it says on the shoes, he was one for two, two RBIs, World Series. And on the other side of the shoe, it says he's the real MVP of the World Series. Okay? I got more to show you. Here's, here's the champagne bottle they have when they shoot the champagne. Here is me holding. That's me. Where do you see it? Let me go. Low, get lower. Let's see. I want to see. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, it. here we oh, go. Oh, yes, I see it. <laughs> this is me at the World Series in 03. And see that sign? Yeah, the one that you're holding. Yeah. That sign, World Series champs in 03. It's the one. Is that I sign right there. <gasps> that is okay. so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I got more to show you. Hold on. Where is... I don't know where it is. Somewhere here, I have the ball in the back. Here we go. This is the play. Okay, I have here, you're going to see, mm -hmm. that ball, those shoes, and the third base he left on. Ready? <laughs> yeah. That's the play. Here's the base. And the, what they do in baseball, they'll authenticate it. Mm -hmm. They give you a hologram. Let's see. Oh. See the hologram? Yes. Okay. So baseball has a hologram for everything that's authentic. This is the third base. So from that hologram, you go online, you get a printout, and it tells you this was October 4th, 2003. Giants versus the Marlins game use base. That is the base right here, the Giants. This guy left from that base. Okay? Here are the shoes. Okay? Look at this shoe. That is that shoe. That is insane. That, so that's crazy. Good. Wait, I got four. <laughs> Where's the ball? The ball is in its own. Well, my ball. Hold on. I don't see it. Oh, oh. Somewhere in its own lock. Look at all the balls I have. Here it is. Here it is. I got it. These are all balls signed by players. When Brad Penny won the World Series, he signed that ball for me. Okay? So all these are like game-used balls and signed stuff. But here we go. This ball in this lock, the home plate lock. There's the hologram on the baseball. Mm -hmm. And it says... Game four, Marlins versus Giants, October 4th, 03. Hug holds on to this ball. Home plate collision. Marlins win 7-6. This ball. Is in that hand. What? <laughs> okay. The last thing I want to tell you is that we all know about the Bartman ball. Mm -hmm. I knew about that auction, and I wanted that ball, and I wanted that ball bad, and I wanted to put it on display in my office 
And to anybody who wanted to come to Miami, take a picture with the Bartman ball and get my business card. And maybe I'll pick up some cases. Uh -huh. Right? That reminds me. I also have Marlon's Man business cards now. Oh, nice. Marlon's Man business cards. <laughs> right. So I said they estimated the ball would go for $25,000. Mm -hmm. So when the auction was supposed to end, I was the high bidder at 23. With 10 seconds to go, somebody bid. And in that auction, unlike eBay, eBay, when you bid, it ends at the time they tell you. In this company, whatever you bid, there's 15 minutes of more bids. 15 minutes. What? So instead of the auction ending at 7 o'clock, five hours later at midnight, I'm at $105,000 thinking I got it. And somebody bids one hundred and six. No. Make a long story short, the guy bought it for 112000 and then the next year he blew it up. <laughs> but I wanted that ball, and I wanted it here. I wanted to own the Bartman ball. Mm -hmm. Now, the blown-up ball, I found it. It's on display in a restaurant called Harry Carey's in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's in a little glass showcase about the size of my grandfather clock. And everybody working doesn't know what it is. I asked the hostess, you know what that is? She has no idea. I go, that's the ball from the World Series in 2003. <laughs> and she goes, I'm 20 years old. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But I want that ball. I'm going to try and buy that ball and put it on display here and say, that's the Bartman ball. <laughs> nice. Did you, did you tell her, hey, I'll buy it off of you? No? I told her to get the owner to call me, just give me a number and I'll write a check. But I never heard from him. But right now, I think they would sell it. Because right now, there's not a lot of business in restaurants. <laughs> right, now they're good. right now, you're about to get that ball. <laughs> yes. And I'll put that on display, the Bartman ball. I have some, uh, I guess, Kenny Jason is saying to, for you to text, text him. Yeah, Jason disappeared. I used to hear from Jason all the time. <laughs> And then he worked at Omaha Storm Chasers, and he was a great, good friend of mine, and then he disappeared. Yeah, now he has appeared again. But he's not at the Storm Chasers anymore, because I called them up, and I asked for him, and they kept trying to get somebody else to help me, and then finally they said he's not with the Storm Chasers anymore. Oh, well. I didn't know that. There he is. No, what I I'm loving that you have all the memorabilia. Uh, thank you so much again oh, for joining my hey, IG. Dar oh look, Darth Vader <laughs> just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> he even showed up there. I have a dog. Yeah, where to go? Somewhere in there. <laughs> Says. How is? I have a question for you. Yeah, of course. Ready? Mm -hmm. What's going on in Phoenix? Okay. With baseball, has anybody talked about if they're going to need all the hotel rooms? Well, the first thing that had come up was that they wanted all 30 teams here. So we do have the 10 spring training fields and then the one uh, chase field. So it would be a total of 11 fields. And it would be kind of just like sticking, trying to accommodate all the teams in all those 11 fields. But that was because Florida's coronavirus cases are so high. And it's like it's a hot state. So they didn't want to do that, and they were just going to divide the, the leagues here. But now I'm seeing it's too many teams, and because they have to be quarantined, and that they would, might do it half and half. So they might do the Grapefruit League and Arizona. So Florida and Arizona dividing both, like, instead of National and American, it would be Grapefruit and Cactus, and then just get the winner of those and play in the... Well, what, uh, happened, what would happen to, like... The, the rivalry with the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks or the Yankees and the Red Sox. Do they not play anymore? They would play. Yeah, yeah, they would play. They would just be in a different – they had breaking it down into different, um, like, divisions that they called it in between here, the Great Facility. So they would still have that rivalry, but um, I don't know how they're going to do it because they wanted to start in May, spring training, and then start they in May. But they can't do that. 
But now that's not going to happen because yeah. What I heard, no I'm friends with. I can told you, I'm friends with four of the owners. They were telling me, realistically, they wanted spring training for two weeks in June, and they want Fourth of July to start the season. Yeah. That's what they said. Yeah, now it's and more they said, like that. Mm -hmm. But they said if they don't start playing baseball by Fourth of July, because baseball has to be played outdoors. It's going to make it very tough and difficult for them to have a whole season. Yes, it is. So, uh, I don't know. I'm seeing, I'm just hoping that they kind of base it off with what Taiwan and the Japanese leagues are doing and see what, what happens there. But uh, they, the players need to practice. They can't even practice right now wherever in the countries that they're in or no. wherever they are because they, they're on lockdown. Oh, actually, well, I do have one question for you. Um, well, I guess you could tell us a little bit about that story. Is you are the Marlins man, and the Marlins owner is Derek Jeter. So, have you met Derek Jeter? And what were your first words when that you told Derek Jeter when you met him? <laughs> okay, the first time I met Derek Jeter was in Yankee Stadium. He won't remember that, but I guarantee he remembers the second time. <laughs> it was the town hall meeting, and I wasn't going to speak. Mm -hmm. And person after person was getting up and complaining and crying about they lost all their players. And I got up there intending to say, I've been to a lot of stadiums. I'm going to tell you how to fix this by what I see other places. Mm -hmm. But each person who got up was supposed to say their name, what they do, and how long they've been seeing figure all this. So you would come up and say, Hi, my name's Eileen. And I'm a reporter, and I've been a season lawyer for two years. Mm -hmm. Everybody did that. I thought if I got up there and said, hi, my name is Lawrence Levy, I'm known as the Marlins man, everybody would just start laughing, like, of course you know who you are. <laughs> Without thinking about it, my words became famous. I walked up there and I grabbed the mic, because everybody was texting me saying, you got to go up there and speak. Mm -hmm. You speak really well. You're a lawyer. You've been an original season ticket holder since the first year. There only is like 1,100 of them left at that time. Now there's less. Um, you got to speak. So I got up there and I took the mic and I go, Derek, do you know who I am? Just like that. Here I am, a fan saying the Hall of Fame player is Derek Jeter. Do you know who I am? I love it. And he said, I know who you are. I've heard of you. We've never met. And I said, I'm not going to complain like everybody else. I'm going to tell you how to make this team do good. Because mm -hmm. you've already made your decisions and gone a different way. You have to make it fun to come here and stop selling the product. Your product's terrible. You're going to have a minor league team for three years. Tampa Bay Buccaneers went 0-16, and the stadium was sold out every day. They made it fun. you got to take the West Plaza and encourage tailgating and have fun there. People have to come in the stadium to have fun. Meet your neighbors. Dance with your neighbors. Share a business card with your neighbors, okay, in your seat. Because the team we're going to see is going to be terrible. Make it fun. Make it fun. And I also told him... This is going to kick us out in like 30 seconds. I think we've been here too okay. long. <laughs> but thank you.